Okay, will you open up your Bibles to Hebrews? Chapter 2 today. Hebrews chapter 2. All right, let's bow in prayer before we start. Holy Father, we come before you thanking you for our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, having faith in Christ is how we get to heaven. We thank you, Father, for eternal life. Our souls are saved, Father. We thank you for your goodness and mercy. Thank you for the Holy Bible that uh, teaches us the way of salvation. Uh, keep us in the word, Father, reading the Bible, our daily bread. We thank you, Father, for your goodness and mercy and pray that you bless the hearing of your word to our hearts and the time in the, in the scriptures. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, Hebrews chapter 2. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels would stay, was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord <clears throat> and then was confirmed unto us by them that heard him, God also bearing them witness both with signs and wonders and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to his own will. For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come whereof we speak, but one in a certain place testified saying, what is man that thou art mindful of him or the son of man that thou visitest him? Thou madest him a little lower than the angels Thou crownedest him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he had put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. But now we see not yet all things put under him, but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that by the grace of God should taste death, death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things and bring in many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all one. For which cause he's not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I am the children which God had given me. For, a much, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself Likewise, took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself had suffered being tempted, he is able to secure them that are tempted. Okay. <clears throat> we are in Judges 16. And uh, we ought to be finished with the uh, studying judges today. And if that's so, 
then Lord willing, we're going to go right into the book of Revelation next week. And so we come to the last two verses of Judges 16 and we come to verse 30. And it says there, and Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might and the house fell up upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they, they which he slew in his life. Okay, so I wanna look at this word bowed. Uh, it, it means stretch, spread out, uh, bend. And um, when, when you study this word bow, it's used in God's judgment or God's wrath. Okay. Now we looked at, uh, in Luke 13, we looked at that woman that was bowed. And um, if you want to flip over there real quick, look at Luke 13. And remember, she was um, the 13, look at verse 11. Behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could no wise lift up herself. And that word uh, means bent. And, and so this is the spiritual condition of mankind. They're not straight in the Lord. And the Lord has to straighten us. And uh, sometimes you'll hear uh, when, when uh, a father might tell his kids, straighten up. And uh, in other words, they were doing something wrong. And the condition of mankind is that we're sinners. And, and uh, we're bowed spiritually, see? And, and the Lord has to come, like in verse 13, he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Now that would be salvation. And so remember in that, con that bowed condition, it's judgment. That person is under God's judgment. Um, but when you become saved, now you're, you're a child of God, say. And so you're straight. And the Bible says straight is the gate. And, and narrow is the way to life. And so go back to uh, Judges 16. This, um, uh, this uh, Samson here uh, is going to bring judgment upon the Philistines. So I want to show you how this word bowed. Uh, it's also translated um, uh, put not, um, spread out, uh, bend. Um, and so let me show you some verses that point to uh, judgment. Look at 2 Samuel 22, 8 through 10. Second Samuel 22, 8 through 10. The earth shook and trembled. The foundations of heaven moved and shook because he was wroth. There went up smoke out of his nostrils, fire out of his mouth devoured, coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down, see? And so there's that word bowed used in connection with his wrath, see? It says in verse eight, he because he was wroth, angry, wrathful, see, he was wrath, angry. He bowed the heavens also came down and darkness was under his feet. And so here God put that word bowed in there that, that points to judgment. Um, go to Jeremiah 15. Look at verse 5 and 6. Over there it's translated stretch. It's the same Hebrew word. But there it's, it's, it's translated stretch. 15, 5 and 6. For who sh shall have pity upon thee, O Jerusalem? Or who shall bemoan thee? Or who shall go aside to ask how thou doest? Thou hast forsaken me, said the Lord. Thou art gone backward. 
therefore will I stretch, there's that word bowed, I will stretch out my hand against thee and destroy thee. I am weary with thy repent, with repenting. So you see how God puts uh, that word bowed, stretch, that would point to his wrath or judgment. And so when we see here that Samson, uh, uh, back in Ju uh, Judges 1630, um, he bowed himself with all his might, see? So we know something's going on that's going to bring judgment by God putting that word bowed in there. And so this word might means force, power, strength. And of course, it's God's strength that, uh, that he's given Samson to bring judgment, say, upon the house of Dagon or the Philistines here. And so um, remember, as we went through Samson, uh, the book of Judges here uh, about Samson, uh, the spirit of the Lord came upon Samson. Remember, he killed that lion. Uh, a young lion approached him and, and he killed him with his bare hands. And uh, he would take that, that rope and just burst it uh, like nothing. Uh, this is all the power and the strength of God, see? And, uh, um, and so spiritually, God gives us this power, this strength. And, you know, believers bring the word of God, which brings judgment. If you reject the gospel, um, Jesus sent them out. And, and he says, if, if they receive you not, shake the dust off your feet, which is saying that this city or that house is under judgment because they, they don't receive the Lord Jesus Christ. They don't receive Christ. And today it's very uh, uh, popular or uh, the night nature of man is to reject the gospel because of uh, their sin and their uh, their distraction. There's so many distractions that, that people don't even think of eternity and uh, or God. Uh, they're so caught up in things of this world that they don't even uh, fear God or keep his commandments. Like it says the whole duty of man. Um, you go, you know where that is. Go to Ecclesiastes and look at that. Uh, chapter 12. Look at the last verse there. Verse 13, 12, 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. See? For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So the thing, uh, we can't fear God unless he puts that heart in us, that fear of God in our hearts. God saves us and we reverence our Lord Jesus Christ, see? We fear him. Fear means reverence. And so uh, there's no fear of God in, in the eyes of the wicked. Uh, the, the, the wicked do, does not fear God. Um, and so... Um, I want to go back to Judges, and so with all his might, he bowed himself with all his might, and the house fell, okay? Now, this is God's might, God's power, okay? Let me just show you one verse, Exodus 15, look at verse 6. 15, verse 6. Thy right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, hath dashed in pieces the enemy. Say, glorious in power. Christ is the right hand of the Lord. And uh, uh, his power is how we become born of God, born again. And so now it says, the house fell upon the Lord's and upon all the people. Now, of course, that word fell, uh, we know that's judgment, just like we've seen that bowed is judgment. And uh, 
uh, this word fell in the Hebrew, it means to fall, cast down, cast out, or perish. See? And uh, I just want to show you a few verses in Psalms how that, how that word is used. And you could see yourselves, it points to judgment. Uh, look at Psalms 27, look at verse 2. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. So uh, those are the enemies of the Lord, see, under the wrath or judgment of God. Look at Psalms 140, 8 through 10. There it's translated cast. Psalms 140, 8 through 10. Grant, um, grant not, O Lord, the desires of the wicked, further not his wicked device, lest they exalt themselves. As for the head of those that compass me about, let the mischief of their own lips cover them. Let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire. That's the word fell. Cast into the fire, into deep pits that they rise not up again. See? So you see how that word's used in judgment. So the house uh, fell upon the lords and upon the people. See, Now, uh, I want to go to another verse in Matthew 24. <clears throat> Look at verse um, 43 and 44. Well, I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go through forty to forty-six. Okay, so forty-three. But know this: that if the good man of the house had known, and what watch the thief would come. Now, I'm going to explain this. This good man in the Greek it means dwelling. So, who's the the? This is somebody dwelling in the house, which would be a their own inward dwelling, their own inward man. So, so this is a person uh, that's in their, uh, when it says house there, it's, it's really their inner man. So know this, that the good men of the house had known what watch the thief would come. Now, Bible says the Lord Jesus comes as a, as a thief in the night. They that are ready will, will have eternal life. They that are not ready will, have, will get his house broken up as we read this. Uh, so the thief would come. He would have watched. Now to watch is your eyes are open, that you have salvation, see? And uh, before salvation, we're spiritually dead. And you, you can't, you're not watching. When you're saved, your eyes are open. So it says there, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up, see? And broken would be a picture of judgment. And so this is a person that's not saved. He's not watching. And because of that, when Christ comes, or if if uh, if somebody leaves this earth and not is not saved, uh, that person it, it's appointed unto men once to die, and after this the judgment. Then this person will have to spend eternity, as the Bible puts it, in a place called the lake of fire, because they're not ready. They haven't their sins aren't washed away in the blood of Christ, and so this is why it says is it, he would not have, if he was watching, he would not have suffered his house to be broken up. But he's not watching. See, if he's not watching, then his house will be broken up. So then he says in 44, therefore be also ready, for in such an hour you think not the Son of Man cometh, who then is the faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season, 
Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. In other words, we bring the gospel. And this is what the meat is, to give them meat. That's the gospel of Christ. And so we want to save our loved ones. We would want to save those that uh, are have a, a course that are unsaved. We, we just have a desire to save those uh, that are headed to hell. And, and perhaps God puts us, a, you know, uh, in the path of somebody that we could witness or invite them to fellowship. And, the, and God uses that word, the gospel, to save that person's soul. See, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So um, each of us has to spend eternity somewhere. We all have a soul. And, it, and, and that's why when Jesus died, one was on his right and the other on his left. Heaven and hell. And remember, he told the one on his right, um, this day you'll be with me in paradise. But the other one remained it in his sins. See? So I, I went to this verse because... Uh, the person that's not watching, his house will be broken up. And Dagon's house was, was broken up. And look at all the people that worship this false god. And, and every one of them uh, was, was killed, say. And so here it says in, in verse 30, and, uh, and it says, uh, and Samson said, let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might. And the house fell upon the lords and upon all the people that were therein. So that the death, the death, the dead, which he slew at his death were more than they, which he slew in his life. Okay. And so it says, um, uh, we just covered it in verse 27. Now the house was full of men and women, and all the lords of the Philistines were there, and there were upon the roof about 3,000 men and women that beheld Samson make, made sport. So um, God's using the complete purpose and will of these Philistines to be judged by saying 3,000. And so, uh, so here the house fell and and um, uh, and they which he slew in his life were the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life so we see now that samson used god used samson to bring judgment upon these philistines see and um of course samson uh, samson is a picture of christ uh that that also uh, is going to bring judgment upon those that are not saved. And do um, um, you notice that language where it says uh, uh, the, the death, where it says here, so the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. So, of course, the moral teaching in it is that... Um, uh, that he 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 brought judgment upon the Philistines while he was alive and slew so many of them. But when he died, there were more uh, than he slew while he was alive. See, in his death, and so there's a lot of meat there, a lot of spiritual uh, teaching there. And so I just want to touch on that, uh, and then we'll go right into verse 31. Um, if you look at uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 15. Now, the gospel is Christ's death, say, uh, burial and resurrection. Look, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 there. It says, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you were saved, if you keep in memory that I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. 
For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he arose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now, this is the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection. And because uh, there's, there's going to be a, a many people that are going to be judged to hell because they reject the gospel. It says there is more people in Christ's death that were that are just like Samson. There's he slew more than uh, in his death than more than which he slew in his life. And so, because of the death, burial, resurrection of Christ, and because people reject that, uh, people will have to spend eternity in hell. Those like the Philistines that didn't believe in the Lord like Samson did. And so um, let me show you another verse. Uh, go to 2 Thessalonians. It says, they, uh, these people that uh, are judged, they obeyed not the gospel, see? And so look at verse um, 2 Thessalonians, uh, chapter 1, 2 Thessalonians. Look at verse, um, start with verse Eight. Uh, well, let me, let me let me go down to verse six. Seeing it a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation uh, to them that trouble you, and to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels, in flame and fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. See, in other words, these people. They don't know God as their savior. They don't, know, they don't know the gospel, just like the Philistines. They rejected the, the gospel, the death, burial, resurrection. So these people are going to be uh, experience a second death, which is the lake of fire. So in verse 8 here, and flaming fire taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. So you see, it's, it's a terrible thing to reject Christ and, and that Christ uh, is not your Lord and Savior and, or to be caught up in a false gospel where now, you have, uh, you're still not saved, but you're, you uh, have been deceived and following after lies, see? And that's still going to bring a person under God's wrath. But the beautiful thing about being saved is uh, go to Romans chapter 8. Look at verse 1 there. Look at Romans 8 verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation. That Greek word means judgment. There's no judgment to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, see? And so believers don't come under judgment. They're in the book of life. We've been predestinated unto salvation. And the Lord Jesus has become our our becomes sin for us, see? And you know the Bible teaches that. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Look at verse 21 there. For he, may, for he hath made him to be sin for us. Now the us there are, are the elect. Those are those, the church, that's his sheep. The good shepherd lays his life down for the sheep. So he had made him, Christ, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And so Christ was made sin for his people. And that he he's the one that uh, suffered the cross, endured God's wrath on our behalf see so we don't come under judgment and this is why when we get saved 
Um, uh, in fact, let me show you another verse in John chapter 5. Look at verse 24, John 5, 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation. Judgment, just like Romans 8, 1, but is passed from death unto life. See? So the true believer, those that are in the book of life, do not come under God's wrath. We are now children of God. He's reconciled us, and we have peace with God through the blood of Christ. And so you don't ever have to wonder if you have to, are you going to come under judgment on judgment day? The answer is absolutely not. You, you, you've gone, you've been translated into the kingdom of God. You're a child of God. And the ones that are, will be judged are those that have, um, uh, rejected the gospel, like it says in Second Thessalonians, that obey, they obey not the gospel of Christ. All right, let's go back to Judges uh, 16, and now let's look at um, verse 30, 31. Then his brethren and all the house of his father came down and took him and brought him up and buried him between Zorah and Isteol, in the burying place of Manoah, his father, and he judged Israel 20 years, okay? And so now uh, we're here at the last verse, and why is God telling us here that um, uh, people brought, uh, took him? See, his brother and all the house of his father came down and took him. It sure sounds similar to what they did to the Lord Jesus. See, go to, go to John chapter 19, 38 through 40. John 19, 38 through 40. And after this, Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for the fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. And he came therefore and took the body of Jesus, and there came also Nicodemus, which at the first came by night, or to Jesus by night, and brought mixture of myrrh, aloes, about a hundred pound weight. Then took they the body of Jesus, and wound it in linen clothes with the spices, as the manner of the Jews is to bury. So someone came and took Samson, and now someone here is coming to take Christ. And so go back to Judges. And, uh, and so we, we see that uh, we have this interesting language here that God put in, the, in this verse. Why do we have to know that he was buried between Zorah and Istiol. Why do we have to know that? What does what is that teaching spiritually? Okay, and so um, I want to I want to look into that right now. Um, this word Zorah in the Hebrew it means a wasp as stinging. Uh, to be stricken with leprosy. It's a picture of unsaved mankind, Zara. okay? It's a picture of unsaved mankind. If you look at Leviticus, it's translated uh, leper or leprosy over there. Um, Leviticus 13. Look at uh, one through three. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, When a man shall have in the skin of his flesh 
a rising, a scab or a bright spot, and it be in the skin of his flesh, like the plague of leprosy. Then he shall be brought unto Aaron, the priest, or unto one of his sons, the priest. And the priest shall look on the plague of the skin of the flesh. And when the hair in the plague is turned white, and the plague in sight, the plague in, in sight be deeper than the skin of his flesh, it is a plague of leprosy. And the priest shall look on it and pronounce him unclean. See? And so uh, leprosy is a picture. Now also look at verse 44 in the same chapter. He is a leprous man. He is unclean. The priest shall pronounce him utterly unclean. His plague is in his head. And so people spiritually are lepers. See, when you read about Jesus healing the leper, it's our spiritual condition. Leper would imply on being unclean. And, and we are unclean in our sins, see, until we're washed in the blood of Christ. Then you're cleansed, see. But estiol uh, or zora, uh, it's, it's um, stricken with leprosy, a wasp is stinging. And so uh, I says it's translated, that word zora is, is, uh, is from several Hebrew words. And one of them is, is translated leper. And that's why I went to Leviticus 13, because that word Zora is derived from that word leper and, and, uh, or leprosy. So then Zora would be a picture of unsaved man. Uh, and so we have, he was buried between Okay, now um, this word, I want to show you this word, uh, estiol, it means entreaty, to make supplications. It's also translated pray. So I want to go to some verses that, that talk about uh, this word, okay? And so let's go to... Um, uh, Psalms 119, verse 76. It's translated pray over there. <clears throat> 119, 76. Let I pray thee thy mercy, merciful kindness be for my comfort according to thy word unto thy servant. That word pray, see, is, uh, is trans, it's, uh, it's this word estial is also derived from a, a Hebrew word that means request, pray, entreaty. Look at Psalms 122, verse six. Pray for peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Okay? So we're seeing here that this, this picture of estiol has to do with prayer or it has to do with God because we pray to God. And uh, I want to show you some verses. Go to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So prayer has to do with, with God, um, with heaven, with God. And so here, Samson is buried between Zora and Estiol. So we've seen that Zora is a picture of unsaved man, and Estiol would be a picture of uh, God or prayer, which God is in heaven. And so, um, and we pray to God, so you would have to connect Estiol with God. 
but do you get the picture? He was he was buried between those two places. And what does the Bible say that Jesus is a mediator? See? To and which means between or go between. Go to First Timothy chapter two. First Timothy chapter two. Look at verse five. There is one God and one mediator. Now that word mediator in the Greek, it means uh, go between, between or intercessor. So he's between God and men. Zara and Estiol, see? And so that's why God's given us that. Why is it important for us to know where Samson was buried? They could, it could have just said, and they, they got Z, they got Samson and, and buried him. But the Lord puts these words in us for, the, for us to dig and to see how God uses these words. And he's a pitcher, see? He's a pitcher of Christ. And so there it is right there that Jesus is a mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus, see? And so, um, and here, and, and through his death, it says uh, Christ's death was between Zora and Estiol, God and man, see? So the only way to get to God is through the Lord Jesus Christ. Otherwise, you'll never uh, get to God uh, by your good works, by going through something else. There's, there's no other salvation uh, given among men, it says, that we must be saved. Um, let's, let's go to Hebrews chapter 9. Look at 14 and 15. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? For, and for this cause, he, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Well, they which are called are the elect, were called with the holy calling. But uh, again, Christ uh, is a mediator. He's an intercessor. Samson was buried between Zora and Estiol. See? He, he was a mediator between Zora and Estiol. Christ is a mediator between God and man. See? So, so we can see how Zora would be a picture of man because I, I gave you verses how it's used as leprosy. And then estiol is, means entreaty, to pray. And that's, that's, uh, that points to God, see? You see that? So anyway, I wanted to bring that out. And uh, um, that should pretty much complete the study of Samson after, I don't know how long we've worked on this, but we covered uh, Judges, I think 13, where it starts about, uh, uh, starts talking about Samson and all the way through 16. And we know uh, the last verse says, he judged Israel 20 years. So we know that Samson was 20 years old, uh, when he began to uh, judge Israel. So uh, if he judged Israel 20 years, that means uh, Samson was about 40 years old when he died. So um, uh, God raised up Samson and we know he was a man of faith and we could go to Hebrews 11, go to Hebrews 11 where it talks about that.
Look at verse 32. And what, what shall I say? What shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and of Samson and of Jethna and of David also and Samuel and of the prophets. See? And so these are these, this chapter is uh, those of faith. See? And, and here listed, you have Samson, David, and Gideon, and people that, uh, uh, that God's uh, good will to put those and the, put there in those verses, see? So uh, it's, been a, it's been a good study for me uh, in working with these verses. Um, there's a lot of figurative language that we look through uh, from the time uh, that Samson killed that young lion and, and uh, uh, the Holy Spirit came upon Samson. And then remember the, uh, um, the foxes, he caught 300 foxes, which is a, a, um, a different number. Um, you know, why 300? And we've seen uh, that was the complete purpose or will of God. And just like 3,000 were, were killed in this judgment, uh, why that number? And we've seen that's the complete purpose or will of God, to bring judgment on those that uh, go after another God. Uh, and here, in, it was Dagon that God brought, uh, used Samson to bring judgment. So, Lord willing, now we'll start with Revelation chapter one uh, next week, and we'll see uh, what that has to say. And there, there's a lot of figurative language in Revelation, so it'd be very interesting study.